I'm getting low on coals. <laughs> I just noticed the bag. This is where I store all of my coals. Right now, some of them are like little tiny pieces and fractals like this. I think it'll be good to just insert those inside while there's like coals going. Feels like there's four whole coals left inside of this right now. I've been trying to smush my copal in here to turn it into dust so it kind of goes farther. Sometimes too much copal can make the coal go out. So that's been fun learning that the hard way. It's a process, it's a process. Oh, uh, looks like I got my pants dirty already. So much ash is blowing up into my face when I blow in. I'm going to need to invest and get one of those torches. No, it looks like that coal went out. Too much copal. <laughs> I'm like, burn another coal. <laughs> <sighs> Trying to just keep a positive attitude as everything goes wrong. <laughs> Some people say that when everything feels like it's falling apart, it's actually falling into place. I have been in my own process of doing my own personal healing shadow work. Shadow work has to do with making what's unconscious conscious. Sometimes noticing things that you don't like about yourself or your dark side. I'm guided to be personal and to share my personal darkness. Or like my shadows. Things that I don't like about myself. Or like things that I'm trying to change and integrate and work with. Or maybe like reframe and rethink about differently instead of um, having limited false belief systems. So one of mine is when things get stressful, I like to spend, I like to buy things or like, right, use other things like, oh, I'm depressed, let's burn some copal, <laughs> right? Or maybe let's go shopping. And maybe it's not the appropriate time to go shopping, right? Like we're in a position where maybe spending isn't the most wise time, yet the not allowed energy creates a space where one wishes and wants to more than normal. More than normal. 
to spend and shop. And then another thing is overly working out. It's like something else. I'll go from overly working out to eating too much. Even if it's like healthy stuff, it's just like eating too much. Too many pecans or it can even be the other way too. Like eating too much chocolate and then like exercising like crazy or eating bread. I am disciplining myself, attempting to remove from me my hunger for seeking outside of myself and trying to find peace within myself and I'm watching myself resort back to old habits of spending or seeking outside myself or keeping myself too busy numbing myself from the pain or the trauma or the wound and instead of you know being with it and um I'm sure we all experience the buyer's remorse or the guilt or um the imbalance or the balancing of I'm worth this or I'm not worth this or like I've I'm I'm in, like all those those imbalances <sighs> it's not easy to like ground these messages and to be so vulnerable however I thought that it would be important to Trina to possibly be fruitful to be transparent because perhaps by me being transparent with you in the way that I am with myself, that you will choose to better yourself or choose to see that you're not the only and that, you know, everyone's not perfect. No one's perfect. We have all bought and believed into this story that people who are successful are perfect or that they don't have, you know, fears in their mind or um, anger or sadness or mental worries and things like that. <laughs> Dirty hands. The coals. When really I think that part of our perfection and our beauty is our human nature flaws. And there can be some things that are good, right? Like there's a level of doing these leg lifts that are actually very healing and helpful to the body. Instead of um, exclusively fragmented or isolated and categorized and framed as ways that I am hurting myself. <sighs> Self-sabotage is a very common theme right now. Self-sabotage can come in many forms where we push people away verbally or even energetically and just like we say that we love them but really we're pushing them away. Or self-sabotage where maybe you're depleting your bank account or something that you've been saving. Like let's say you've saved this I don't know, I'm trying to make stuff up. I guess maybe someone's saving a bottle of wine and you're saving it for that special occasion, even holding it forever. You know, now is your special occasion. You know what I mean? I'm not encouraging you to drink. As a matter of fact, I'm a person who personally chooses not to indulge my liver in such things. Part of my self-sabotage can be not drinking enough water, or just not drinking water at all. Sometimes it's not even something that I am thinking of. So sometimes I am having to discipline myself I am practicing and exercising fast today and I've been playing around watching it and watching myself and the stories that my brain or my self will try to tell myself to try to convince me to behave differently, right? And I found it is I found it most interesting and fascinating to study like all of the organs and in traditional Chinese medicine how each organ has like a time that is like going through its cycles. And I found it so fascinating to watch myself fast, like awake, you know, consciously through certain periods, right? Like one organ can represent bitterness and maybe that's at like three o'clock in the morning and things like that. So I'm interested in kind of like playing with these things because so far I've only exercised and played with like the heart organ and I believe the spleen. And um, it's going to take some more discipline and time for me to invest in myself to actually come into the state of awareness that I am having my trajectory be. You know, another part of me sharing this with you is the eagerness to have like a family or like people, friends, you know, brothers, sisters, companions, friends, people um, who like respect where I'm trying to go. And I'm not saying that like you have to copy me and be like me and go my trajectory. But I am interested in those who would like hold me accountable in my trajectory. Like if I tell you like my goal is to have six pack abs, right? 
instead of you giving me a hard time saying you're fine you need more meat or like you know telling me anything else like support my trajectory you know like maybe you know that abs isn't gonna make me feel like amazing about myself right you know but like still support my trajectory like support me going there however also sometimes part of you supporting my trajectory like let's say um let's say someone wants to get abs but it's not to like um for themselves like let's say that it's like a personal power thing for them to feel like I am beautiful or I'm powerful or I am worthy right so like sometimes part of your support to their trajectory would be like you don't need abs to see like how powerful you are and what you can bring to the planet or like things like that and um it's not always easy to find people who are totally like with your spirit and on the way especially when everyone's got like their own spirit and they're on their own way and things like that and figuring out the whole meaning of life and purpose and the map you know the the whole map that's the simplest way that i can put it i would love to spend time meditating trying to figure out how i could simplify and start things off from scratch of stating the map i guess i could try now start now imagine a map and the map has all the places you've been in life before but the map also has places you want to go and the map has places you definitely want to avoid there's maybe experiences or like write certain keywords like I want to avoid fear or hatred or I want to avoid racism or I want to avoid ignorance okay I want to avoid separation you know and then you have to find like um the fine lines of like where you're going sometimes you may find that like if you're avoiding racism like you may need to show up in the racism areas because your voice is needed there However, if you're so afraid and you're avoiding conflict, you don't see how potent and how beautiful and powerful your voice is. That's why I get so confused sometimes when so many people are watchers and viewers, but they're not adding their voice. Sometimes it can be painful because like you're hurting yourself so badly just by being quiet because the whole world is suffering. You're allowing the world to go on in this way instead of doing your part, doing your role. But it's really a matter of you listening to your intuition or your, every fiber of your being to follow suit and to follow through into doing you. I have also considered doing like exercise videos. I was wondering if that would be helpful possibly. And then like in that way, I would also be journaling and documenting and you could say doing spoken word. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm sending you all my love. This is all the energy I have today. I have a couple ideas of things to create and do and to share with you. It's just a process. So please be patient, please be patient. If you are finding yourself hungry and wanting more, wanting more, maybe wanting new content, new video or this or that, I can only suggest you do an equal energetic exchange, you know, like let's say you want me to produce this one video where I go underwater and I hold my nose and I jump in the deep end and I do this and I do this, like make an offer, be like, hey, for 300 bucks, will you do this, this and this, this and this, and then it can be like this long and then, you know, all the specifics or <sighs> I'm not sure, part of me is tired of storytelling and I'm just like calling in that I would like to make money doing things that I love. And I love being underwater. I love being underwater. I love, love, love being underwater. I love, I love wet hair. I love, I love taking my clothes underwater. There's something very fun about that. I don't know if it's like the whole that it's like, I, I, part of me does know it. it has nothing to do with it. Like people thinking that it's weird. I mean, sometimes I can feel awkward to be the self and want to go in water dressed like this, right? And um, it, it's just, uh, it's almost like water is just like another skin or like another layer. It's just underwater is home. <laughs> Many ideas and concepts and the storytelling could be forever. So please allow me to exit my ego. Thank you for spending time with me and thank you for being supportive of my journey. Thank you for bringing your power to the table. You have no idea. You have no idea what you provide in my life. Perhaps you have an idea or a small insight. 
you have no idea. You have no idea. Sometimes I have no idea like how fearful or what I'm creating. Meaning like how fearful you are and what you're projecting on me and what you're imagining my future to be. That you're allowing my reality to enfold in that way. Instead, use your imagination where I am happy. And I am happy now, and I'm happy now, and I'm happy now. And a million moments from later, that is now, I am happy. And that you are not jealous that I am happy or that I am free or that I am content with all that is me and that I am no longer seeking outside of me. And perhaps by you holding a space for me to be in such a way, you can hold a space for you to have that goal. Only if you choose and if that makes you happy and if you find that that is the way. But this is my way. My way that Yahweh has made so clear for me. And I am so sorry and guilty for all the times that I am not listening to Yahweh. It, it's, it's very spiritually sickening, to say the very least, to learn the hard way. <sighs> However, it is most graceful and glorious and merciful and bountiful and never ending. <sighs> I'm struggling to figure out what makes it so difficult to completely to surrender to it. Perhaps a part of it is that one is afraid to completely lose themselves and their separateness. When really that's part of like the big picture and the biggest beauty of all is that surrender and becoming one with the all. Perhaps that's where death comes in and people being so afraid of death and not fully understanding and knowing what happens on the other side and there are others who have a clear sense in their stomach and in every fiber of their being with this knowing that there is rest or there's peace or that there's nothing to worry about that fragment of life and then there are others who feel the shades and the depths and the other aspects of the other side that are potential to those who allow themselves to continue in ways that do not allow themselves to feel good some scripture says that as it is on earth it is in heaven so if you are in drowning in sadness and feeling without God here on earth, imagine what it's like in heaven, you know? And then there's a difference between us saying, God is here, you know, like people, spiritual people, you know, who are like, God's with me, I'm so happy. Can you like see through all that and tell like when they like are wanting to believe their own story? There are times where I want to believe my own story. And there are times where it's so clear and obvious that God is like here in every single moment and every single second. And there are other times that I forget. I'm like, where are you hiding? Are you still here? I feel forgotten about. <laughs> I need your attention. Come back. <laughs> Love me. <laughs> and I imagine that everyone feels the same way. Anyone that is open to believing and allowing that presence, I suppose. Perhaps that's also where belief comes in, where sometimes, which is better, you know, living a life where nobody cares or there's no God and nobody cares and nobody's watching and no one's listening? Or is it more fun to live your life in a way that we are not alone and that there's some special meaning to every small little thing? I think Einstein has a quote that is pretty in alignment with that. Maybe one of you can drop that in the comments about it's about the fine line of how something can be everything and nothing at once. <laughs> like it's a miracle. I forgot the exact words, but those of you who are Einstein fans, I'm sure the message will come clear. I'm feeling extremely childlike today. Like I am, I am nothing. I'm sand. I'm meaningless. I'm a blade of grass. And there's part of me that is just feeling such humbleness and grace and just being this nothingness. Like, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it's so graceful. And there's just a part of extreme bliss that fills from that. Some people would try to paint a story to my experience right now and say that I'm in my Saturn's return. And that's just a matter of my age. I'm in my first midlife crisis of um, transmutating or transcendence and um dealing with you know a death a death of the self that i am becoming myself that i'm having an identity crisis that i am rebuilding myself 
that I am eliminating this story that I have to have this degree or that I have to have this family or this type of place of home or all these stories. I'm separating myself from the stories and all the things that I was taught that I have to love and that I have to choose. And then I'm having to choose to be selfish or to love me by letting myself have what really makes me happy even if other people don't understand, you know? And it sucks because some people might have a house and live with their family and be completely happy and content with where they are in their life. And maybe that's perfect for them and for who they are now, you know? And just like for me right now, I'm really enjoying the freedom of the creation of just like getting to pick and start from scratch like the, the imagination comes to mind is like, you know, someone who has a backpack and only has a few things on their back and that they're starting from scratch and they're starting a new life. They're getting a new home. They're getting a new job. They're getting a new view on the world, you know? And then all these things are interwoven. They have new relationships, new friends, they're in a new city. And that's just the vibes that I'm penetrating right now. And it's feeling extremely alien or childlike or unfamiliar or fun. You know, it's unknown, it's it's fear. I mean, there's many different words for that, that unknowingness, that delicacy, that gentleness, that tenderness. And um, I imagine that this is where many times we start seeking to others, like, please, hey, I need a hand. I'm very lost and confused. I need $1 million and I need food and I need this and I need help cleaning this and then I'm tired of doing all this work alone, so I need your help doing this. When really like, um, I feel like instead of us going here, there's something going on with us going here. And us doing it in silence. And then just seeing who shows up, what shows up. Noticing the timing that it happens to, like all the ironies. I feel like that's where God is, like in the in-between of all of these things. And I think that there's like a fine line between of uh, this asking for help and leaving a hand open and being very clear what your needs are publicly versus holding a container privately and some people really struggle with the balance of that like they're telling God everything and then they see person and they know that that person could provide for them what they're praying to the Lord for and they might know that God might have put that person in their life for them to do that but then they have to do their role where they step and they say hey you're that guy that God sent for me for me to believe in myself you're that guy you're that woman God sent for you to lift me up. You're that person God sent to help me out in this time. You're that person that God sent to help point me in this new direction that I wouldn't even think of because I never knew you. It's your choice to let us get to know you. It's my choice to let you get to know me and to be completely transparent with you. And I am in belief that only by me being completely, whoop, <laughs> by me being complete, fully transparent in all that is me, only then can I come into alignment of having that acceptance and that success of having those in unity with me. You know, what fun is the dance, dancing all alone? And it's the same thing when you're building up all that anger, all that anger. It's more so about being careful about what you're channeling. What are you being a conduit for? What are you creating? You're the creator, you're the conduit. What are you sending out? What are you permeating through every fiber of your being? I'm not saying that you are to deny your anger because this will just cause it to fester and get even more outside of your control. But if you honor it and say, yes, I am angry I was betrayed and lied to. I am angry I was deceived. I am angry that I was foolish and I did not see. I am angry at me. Understand? Once you see that you are angry at you that you did not see, then you can take accountability for yourself and say, okay, I choose to see more. I choose to be fully present. And some of you may have to choose to stop eating, stop smoking, stop drinking, stop taking in stuff and take time to be. And fasting from all those things that you are addicted to, people, places, things, 
you can notice yourself. If you're a person that has a story saying, I can't fast, I get angry and grumpy and I treat everyone bad. Notice that. Notice that and let yourself be that and step into more and more of the story because I promise you it has nothing to do with food. It has nothing to do with food. It's deeper, it's deeper, deeper, deeper into the brain, deeper into the throat, into the lungs, about you wanting to be here, how you feel about the planet, how you feel about everybody. And just notice how you treat everyone is how you're treating yourself. So how you're treating yourself, for example, if I'm treating myself poorly, if I'm saying you're ugly, you're stupid, you're defiant, you're ignorant, you're foolish, you're brainwashed, how am I treating you? You understand? So if you can understand that I am transparent with you with that, then you will see and know that when someone is being like that to you, you will know how they're being to them and you can have compassion and be that mother, that father, that lover, that friend and be there for them in the way that they need that they don't even know that they're missing and that they don't see. I will be transparent and say that I am lonely. People see and think I have so many followers, so many friends, so many people when really many times I feel just pressured, controlled, wanted, no space to be me, only who you want me to be. Which sometimes is cool to see like what you need and I can do my best to please the world, to fill your needs because I am a person who has compassion and has grown in such a way that might be able to supply the work and effort and love and energy necessary to change. However, we have to be the change we want to see and part of my process and my divinity is by me discovering who I am and who I love to be. And who I love to be is a psychic reader and medium and working for God. Like, this is just so beautiful to me. And I choose to be of the maximum service. And I'm not a fan of those who are brainwashed by books, religious books that have been indoctrinated by Freemasons. The King James Bible, if you open up, you can see the Freemason handshake. There are many things about Jesus that have been removed and many of you are aware of this. Many stories about Jesus that aren't true that people believe that make people not believe in Jesus because it's not true. You know, how could they ever believe a story that wasn't true? But when you know that it's true, it's in your heart. There's no forgetting that story. So there's things like that going on and part of that has to do with the psychic medium stuff because people think that that's the devil's work when that's not true. You can get the fruits of the spirit and as a matter of fact, I will gladly get this for you. Uh, I have a couple things I want to get. Number one, if you're watching this message, let's share this message with you. Okay? And make sure Trina gets this message too because she forgets. <laughs> Okay. And then there's this. And I can thank the purple rose and Varney for framing this for me. Or should I say laminating? Um, I had kind of a hard time in my life at one time. And I recognized that my middle name was Christine, which represented Christ. So I said a prayer in my closet in my alone time. And I said, God, if Jesus is real, like help me know who this person is. Or like what's going on with this? And like a few days later, some Mormons knocked at the door and I gave them a little bit of a hard time because I was like, hey, I took this spiritual gifts test and it said this, this, and this, that I had the gift of miracles and craftsmanship and all this. So where is it in your book <laughs> that says all this stuff, right? So Spirit's actually guiding me to read all these out. I know this has been really, really long. So those of you who are actually choosing to be with me completely, not just like as an image or because I'm not in water, like, like, you know what I mean? Like that you're fully showing up. You're here no matter what, like you're my love, my family, you're my friends, you're my companions. Like, thank you. Thank you. I've been so lonely. So I'll read a gift of translation. Um, I'm being guided to share with you exactly in which part of the book it's in here. And I apologize. I have not read the book of Mormon, so I'm not aware of like each one of these, okay? But the gift of translation, that's from Alma 920 through 21. The gift of inspired music is one or yeah, one Samuel 10, five. The gift of inspired craftsmanship, Exodus 31, three. 
The gift of inspired dreams, Daniel 2.28. The gift of comfort by the Holy Spirit, Acts of 9.31. The gift of the word of wisdom, 1 Corinthians 12.8. The gift of the word of knowledge, 1 Corinthians 12.8. Um, the gift of faith, 1 Corinthians 12, 9. The gift of faith to be healed, D and C, 46, 19. The gift of healing, 1 Corinthians 12, 9. The gift of working miracles, 1 Corinthians 12, 10. The gift of prophecy, 1 Corinthians 12, 10. The gift of discerning of spirits, like to me, that's like being able to tell, like if it's an entity, a demon, or if it's the Holy Spirit, or if it's God, okay? or if someone's spirit is good or dark, right? All those energies. The gift of discerning spirits is 1 Corinthians 12, 10. The gift of diverse tongues, um, 1 Corinthians 12, 10. The gift of tongues, Alma 9, 21. The gift of interpretation of tongues, 1 Corinthians 12, 10. To me, that is meaning being able to understand what people are saying no matter what language they are speaking. You know, under, like it's a language thing. The gift of interpretation of languages, Moroni 1016. The understanding of scriptures, JSH 174. The gift of believing heart, 1 Nephi 11, 4 through 5. The gift of seeing and talking to angels, Alma 921. The gift of revelation, Alma 921. The gift of preaching, Alma 921. The gift of translation, Alma 921. The gift of knowing in others' thoughts, Alma 12.3. The gift of organizing and conducting meetings, Moroni 6.9. The gift of charity, Moroni 7.44. The gift of exceedingly great faith, Moroni 10.11. The gift of hope, Moroni 10.20. The gift of teaching words of wisdom, Moroni 10.9. The gift of teaching knowledge, Moroni 10.10. The gift of working mighty miracles, Moroni 10.12. The gift of trusting the spirit, D and C, 11, 12. The gift of feeling joy, D and C, 11, 13. Are any of you feeling cursed and that you are without these gifts? Because these gifts are available to everyone and it's your choice to believe and accept them. So let me keep channeling. The gift of believing you will receive, D and C, 11, 14. The gift of knowing that Jesus Christ lives, DNC 4613. <laughs> the gift of believing in others' testimony, DNC 4614. <laughs> the gift of differences of administration, DNC 4615. The gift of diversities of operations, DNC 4616. The gift of discerning of spirits, DNC 4623. The discern, oops, oops. The gift of discerning all the gifts. DNC 4627. The gift of having all those gifts, DNC 4629. <laughs> the gift of asking, oh my god, I can't even, oh my god. <laughs> the gift of asking according to God's will. <laughs> do you know how hard it is to do God's will? Like, you can so clearly hear the message, but sometimes it's so hard. Like, Spirit will tell you to go through things completely alone, and you're just like, why? What did I do to deserve this? <laughs> but really, like, it's a gift, and it's out of love from God. <laughs> That's the crazy part, <laughs> right? Let's go back. The gift of asking according to God's will, DNC 4630. The gift of gratitude, DNC 4632. The gift of virtue, DNC 4633. The gift of testimony, Mormon doctrine, page 314. The gift of spirituality, Mormon doctrine, page 760 to 761. The gift of knowing the B and M is true, M doc, page 314. That means knowing the Book of Mormons is true. Perhaps I should randomly open that book too. The gift of fair judgment, Mormon doctrine, page 314. The gift of teaching, Mormon doctrine, page 314. I need this doctrine. What doctrine is this, dude? <laughs> the gift of exturation. Exturation. What does that mean? E X H O R T. Extor ex oh, it's not extortion. E X H O R T A T I O N. 
if you have no one dollar to send today and if you would like to send something please leave in the comments what that word means so i can learn that today without having to seek it on my own and do the work because i might not do that or it's just i have an ego story for why i'm not gonna do that but perhaps i'll do that but perhaps you can leave in the comments so everyone else can do it too or know it um the gift of exploration sorry if i said that wrong um, Mormon Doctrine, page 314. The Gift of Preaching, Mormon Doctrine, 314. The Gift of Viewing Visions, Dreams. <laughs> Mormon's Doctrine, page 314. The Gift of Seership, Messiah, 816. The Gift of Following Your Conscious, A-N-W-A-F, page 357. The Gift of Aaron, translation W slash U and T-H, D and C, A. One through six. What does that mean? I want to know what that means. If you know what that means, please teach me that. If you're a teacher, I want to know about that. The gift of repentance, gospel doctrine, 34. The gift of asking, conference report, 10 slash 87, page 23. The gift of listening, CR 10 slash 87, page 23. What is this CR 1087? Like, I want to know what that is too. The gift of hearing the still small voice. CR 1087, page 23. The gift of being able to weep. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God, Jesus. Stop. Don't stop. <laughs> oh my God, the energy. The gift of being able to weep is CR 1027, page 23. The gift of avoiding contention, CR 1087, page 23. The gift of being agreeable. <laughs> CR 1087, page 23. The gift of avoiding vain repetition. CR 1087, page 23. The gift of seeking after righteousness. CR 1087, page 23. The gift of not being critical. CR 1087, page 23. The gift of looking to God. CR 1087, page 23. The gift of being a disciple. CR 1087, page 23, the gift of caring for others. <laughs> what a blessing, right? <laughs> uh, CR 1087, page 23, the gift of being able to ponder. <laughs> uh, CR 10 slash 87, page 23, the gift of offering prayer. <laughs> 10 slash 87, page 23. The gift of bearing a mighty testimony, CR 1087, page 23. And the gift of receiving the Holy Ghost, CR 1087, page 23. Thank you, Mormons, that came to my door. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Like, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Thank you. I'm guided to get up and to pay homage to the Book of Mormon in a very special, sacred way. So if you could please be patient. So I was gifted this book by the church. Man, are all my kapal going up? <laughs> my inner Native American self. My Cherokee blood. Lacks <laughs> my kapal. So this is the book. I apologize. Like I'm sideways and stuff. Ah, Jesus, please show us a message. Please make it personal and true and loving and kind. Thank you, Lord. I feel where you want me to go. But behold, Moroniaha, Moronia, Moronia did preach many things unto the people because of their inequity, and also Nephi and Lehi, who were the sons of Helaman, who did preach many things unto the people. Ye, or is it yea? Yea. And did prophesy many things unto them concerning their inequities. And what should come unto them if they did not repeat of their sins. And it came to pass that they did repent. And inasmuch as they did repent, they did begin to prosper. <laughs> For when Moroni ha saw that they did repent, he did venture to lead them forth from place to place. And from the city to city, even until they had regained one half of their property and one half of all their lands. Mm, there with me. I found like um 
maybe I should just, I don't know. I just found that, like, there's actually a lot of highlights on this page. It just so happens to be a page that I've opened to before. Um, I don't know, should I just keep reading? I don't even know. Uh, it's kind of interesting, okay? So it's like, um, and thus ended the 60 and first year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that in the 60 and second year of the reign of the judges that the Moroniha could obtain no more possessions over the Lamanites. Therefore, they did abandon their design to obtain the remainder of their lands. For so numerous were the Namanites that it became impossible for the Nephites to obtain more power over them. And therefore, Moroniha did employ all his armies in maintaining those parts which he had taken. And it came to pass because of the greatness of the number of Lamanites and Nephites were in great fear, lest they should be overpowered and trodden down and slain and destroyed. Yea, yea, <laughs> Yea, they began to remember the prophecies of Alma and also the words of Messiah. And they saw that they had been stiff-necked people and that they had set at the knot the commandments of God and that they had altered and trampled under their feet the laws of Messiah or that which the Lord commanded him to give unto the people. And they saw that their laws had become corrupted and that they had become a wicked people, insomuch that they were wicked, even like unto the Lamanites. And because of their inequity, the church had begun to dwindle, and they began to disbelieve in the spirit of prophecy and in the spirit of revelation, and the judgment of God did stare them in the face. And they saw that they had become weak, like unto their brethren, uh, weak like unto their brethren, the Lamanites, and that the spirit of the Lord did no more preserve them. Yeah. And, no and, it had withdrawn from them because the spirit of the Lord doth not dwell in hun, an, un, uh, I can't even, it's, but it's the blue part that I highlighted. It says spirit of the Lord doth not dwell in unholy temples. Your body is a temple. So are you being holy? Are you being in unison with yourself? Are you being loving and kind to the whole? You know, are you judging? Therefore, Lord did cease to preserve them by his miraculous and matchless power, for they had fallen into the state of unbelief and awful wickedness. And they saw that the Lamanites were exceedingly more numerous than they, and except they could cleave unto the Lord their God, they must unavoidably perish. For behold, they saw that the strength of the Lamanites was great as their strength, even man for man. And thus they had fallen into this great transgression. Yeah, thus they had become weak because of their transgression in the space of not many years. So is it ye or yea? It's Y-E-A. Ye? Ye is Y-E. Yeah? Ye? Ye? Ye is, I think, I think it's ye. Ye? Ye? Um, I want to get to the part, um, that I, rem that I highlighted. Um, I'm getting yelled at that maybe I should be like taking this more seriously. I'm just going to read chapter five of Hellaman. It looks like I opened to Hellaman and I'm going to start at, um, number two. It says, for as their laws and their governments were established by the voice of the people and they who chose evil were more numerous than those who chose good pause so think about our governments and who rules and like you know what i mean therefore they were ripening for destruction for the laws had become corrupted ye and this was not all they were a stiff-necked people stiff neck meaning like they can't see any other way they're 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 mean or like you know they're stiff they're hard they're cruel whatever um and so much they could not be governed by the law nor justice save it were to their destruction. And it came to pass that Nephi had become weary because of their inequity, and he yielded up the judgment seat and took it upon him to preach the word of God all the remainder of his days, and his brother Lehi also all the remainder of his days. For they remembered the words of their father, Helaman spake which unto them, and these are the words which he spake. Behold, my sons, I desire that ye should remember to keep the commandments of God, and I would that ye should declare unto the people these words. Behold, I have given unto you the names of our first 
parents who came out of the land of Jerusalem. And this I have done that when you remember your names, ye may remember them. And when ye remember them, ye may remember their works. And when ye remember their works, ye may know how that it is said and also written that they were good. Therefore, my sons, I would that ye should do that which is good, that it may be said of you and also written, even as it has been said and written of them. And now, my sons, behold, I have somewhat more to desire of you, which desire is that ye may not do these things that ye may boast, but that ye may do these things to lay up for yourselves a treasure in heaven. Ye, which is eternal, and which fadeth not away, ye that ye may have that precious gift of eternal life that we have reason to suppose hath been given to our fathers. Oh, remember, remember, my sons, the words which King Benjamin spake unto his people, ye. Remember that there is no other way nor means whereby man can be saved only through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ, who shall come, ye remember that he cometh to redeem the world. You know, this really shakes me up, the irony of opening to this page. Um, because, um, you know, the candle, the pink candle falling and it looked red. The Jesus candle that fell looked red and was like bloody from my last live stream. And um, is that interesting, the blood of Jesus Christ. And remember also these words, which Amulek spake unto Zeram in the city of Ammoniah. For he said unto him that the Lord surely should come to redeem his people, but that he should not come to redeem them in their sins, but to redeem them from their sins. <laughs> so that this makes me think of like everyone who is in their sins or like because they were sitting and doing this, that they are drowning in this, that they are not um, to be saved um, let me read that again. In their sin, like, to support you doing that. It's it's hard to explain, but I'm trying to, like, feel into it. They, he should not come to redeem them in their sins. So maybe God won't show up in the moment that you're crying, please. Like, let's say someone has a heroin addiction and they're crying, God, please come, please come now, please come now, please come now. So maybe in the middle of all they're in and doing the act that it cannot come, like, it does not have a space for it. But maybe like opportunity will come where they will feel that knock inside that quietness to not do it again after the high wears off or something like that. This is such a great chapter in a place like I can't even read this anymore. Like I I'm, I'm like, this is too much. It's too much. I need a private space to do it. But I do have another book that comes to mind to show you. So let me please gather that. This is another book that was shared with me that's very special and sacred to my heart. Okay. Um, it has some interesting stuff to it. If you've never seen it, I do suggest you to play with it. I'll randomly open and point. <sighs> I'm in this part and it says, Three days and nights. The multitudes remained and none had aught to eat. And Jesus had compassion and he said, If I should send the multitudes away, they might not reach their homes. For they are faint, for some have journeyed many miles. And his disciples said, Where shall we get enough food to feed them all? There are 4,000 men besides the men and women. Besides the women and little ones. And Jesus said, How many loaves have you? They answered seven and some little fish. Jesus said, go to and seat the people as you seated them the other day when all the multitudes were fed in companies of 12. And when the people were sat down in companies of 12, the loaves and fish were brought. And Jesus looked to the heaven and spoke the word. And then he broke the seven loaves in little bits and likewise cut the fish. And every bit of bread became a loaf and every piece of fish became a fish. The twelve went forth and gave to every one, and the people ate, and they were filled. And all the fragments that were left were gathered up, and there were seven baskets. There were seven baskets full, and the and then the people went their ways, and Jesus in the twelve boats, and came to Dalmanatha, 
by sea. Here they remained for many days, and Jesus told about told the twelve about the inner light that cannot fail, about the kingdom of the Christ within the soul, about the power of faith, about the secret of the resurrection of the dead, about immortal life, and how the living may go forth and help the dead. And then they went into their boats and came into the northern coast of Galilee and in Chorazin, where the kin of Thomas lived, and they left their boat and journey on. They came to Miram, where the crystal water seemed to catch the images of heaven and to reflect the glory of the Lord of hosts. And here they tarried certain days in silent thought, and then they journeyed on and came into the land of Caesarea Philippi. And as they walked and talked amongst themselves, the master said, What do the people say about the Son of Man? What do they think I am? And Matthew said, Some say that you are David come again. Some say that you are Enoch, Solomon, or Seth. And Andrew said, I heard a ruler of the synagogue exclaim, This man is Jeremiah, for he speaks like Jeremiah wrote. Nathaniel said, The foreign masters who were with us for a time declared that Jesus is Guatanama come again. James said, I think most of the master Jews believe you are the reappearance of Elijah on earth. And John spoke out and said, when we were in Jerusalem, I heard a seer explain, exclaim, this Jesus is none other than Melchizedek, the king of peace who lived about 2000 years ago and said he would come again. And Thomas said, the Tetrach Herod thinks that you are John arisen from the dead. But then his conscience troubled him. The spirit of the murdered John looms up before him in his dreams and haunts him as a specter of the night. And Jesus asked, who do you think I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the love of God manifested to men. And Jesus said, thrice blessed are you, Simon, Jonah's son. You have declared a truth that God has given you. You are a rock and you shall be a pillar in the temple of the Lord of hosts. And your confession is the cornerstone of faith a rock of strength, and on this rock the church of Christ is built. Against it all the powers of Hades and of death cannot prevail. Behold, I give to you the keys to open the doors of safety for the sons of men. The holy breath will come upon you and the ten, and in Jerusalem you shall stand before the nations of the earth and there proclaim the covenant of God with men. And you shall speak the words of holy breath and whatsoever God requires of men, earnest of their faith in Christ, you shall make known. <laughs> then turning to the twelve, he said, What you have heard this day, tell not to any men. <laughs> then Jesus and the twelve went up and were Sasana's guests for many days. <laughs> From the Akashic Records, the story of Jesus, the man from Galilee and how he attained the Christ consciousness open to all men and complete record of the lost 18 years so strangely silent in the New Testament a period spent traveling and learning from the masters seers and wise men in the temples and scholars of Tibet Egypt India Persia and Greece wow <laughs> this is a beautiful book that seems to be channeled and it has some interesting stuff I'd like to say a personal prayer asking Peter to possibly help make clear the word and I am guided to also share with you something that has been made known to me that I would like to make known to you. So I understand that there are 10 commandments that are made to all of men. However, there is a very special commandment God has made to you for you to do. And many times you have been in disbelief, not believing that you could hear directly from the Lord when that is not true. And I am not meaning that you have heard directly from Jesus or Allah or Muhammad or Krishna or any specific deity or image or name or picture or idol or way that you choose to express and devote devotion to God to instead of going straight to the source energy. Um, know that that source energy can come to you directly and can give you a message and give you a commandment that you know in your heart is true and right and just. Like maybe um, God tells you you're not the one for her, you know, but Sometimes there can be entities or demons, you know, the discernment of spirit thing again, too, you know. Um, only time can really tell them you have to choose and know who is your God. Are you making, what 
what you listen to and what you obey is your God, right? So are you listening to and obeying the laws of man, which is like money and societal imprint and story? Or are you choosing to express from your being who you choose to be, you know? What kind of man would you be if you weren't beaten and harassed, you know? Would you be a more loving person instead of a fighter? Would you be a a prophet, you know, would you be a preacher? Would you be teaching all the things that you learned about humanity and psychology and um, humanity, you know, but your body is so conditioned and programmed to expressing and being in certain ways. It's really awkward to be a new man, to be a new person, right? To flow and move and dance and be in a new way. But it's really like your choice, your divinity. And you know, and it can be really awkward to at first surrender and like allow your beauty or like uniqueness, you know, whatever you want to call it, weirdness, <laughs> you know, um, shine through. So I hope that you enjoyed this transmission of Shaktipat, transfer of energy. The word guru, it just means G, you are you. I am in the process of becoming my own self master and completely identifying myself and, um, also tearing apart the story that I tell myself that I am light or that I am this blank canvas, you know. We are so much more, just like how we cannot fully perceive God. We cannot fully perceive ourselves and we cannot know everything. And um, we should say thanks for everything that we are given permission to know and see and understand about this human experience. And most of all, I'm in belief of sharing this. So if your brain contains all this information about human brains and psychology and emotions and you understand the human experience from an outsider looking in like from God's eyes what kind of sin would it be for you not to supply the world with your gift you know it's like what's left here on the planet when you're here no more you know what kind of stories are written in stone about you like oh he kicked me he stabbed me in the back she stabbed me in the back she betrayed me you understand so Keep listening to your body. It'll tell you what to do. Can you hear my back cracking? <sighs> There's so much epigenetic memory and trauma in my hips that I'm personally processing. <sighs> the weights of being a woman. Which makes me wonder, is my soul a man? Because <laughs> ah, all the things I'm learning and bearing and experiencing, it's like, ah, uh, is this like the flip side of everything I've ever lived and known before? So that's why everything feels so unfamiliar. Ah, my hip. Maybe I need a chiropractor or a professional massage. <laughs> Who wants to pay for a massage? <laughs> I need $100 <laughs> and I want 10 massages. <laughs> uh, I need another $1,000 to go see an acupuncturist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I need $1,000 for rent and then extra money for bills and then more money for food and then more money for a cat. And then, and then I want like play money. <laughs> play money meaning like, Oh, this person needs a new car. Here's here's a thousand dollars towards that car. You know what I mean? I want to be like that. Oh, you need this here. Oh, you need this. Okay. If money can fix the problem, it's not a real problem. The real problem is your consciousness, like your scarcity, your thinking in scarcity, like thinking that you're not enough or that you don't have enough, or like the other way, like where you spend everything you make and that you never think about others or yourself in another way. But if you're not showing up for yourself that way, you'll never show up for someone else. You know what I mean? Like, um, like let's say there's this woman and she wants to be treated like a princess. Let's say she wants a castle and she wants a dragon and all these things, right? But like, if you're not a man who like loves her so much or love yourself so much that you're willing to like work really, really hard, do all the work that it takes to get the castle, right? Or, and like, sometimes it's not even like money. Right? Like sometimes the castle can be given to you. It can be your inheritance because of other works that you've put in. You understand? And then um, it's about equal energetic exchange. Equal energetic exchange. Sometimes what we give is priceless. So people try to give what they can. But then sometimes people really hurt the world and create really bad karma because they had the opportunity to give and to serve and to, you know, repent or whatever you want to say. And they chose not to. 
But that's something that they have to deal with. And sometimes we can just say, I'm sorry for you having to go through that. You know, I've been there. I think that I am officially done. I'm going to take some time for myself. I have given so much already, I feel like. And I have been so transparent. I have not ate. I am choosing to only drink water for as long as I can. I'm going to try to work with my breath. And I'm thinking today is a good day for me to spend time completely by myself as much as possible. As much as possible. At the same time, I'm also tempted to go to a drum circle and a bonfire tonight. I'm asking God to please come into my heart and make very clear what I am to do. Which honestly might be to just get quiet and spend time alone with just God. And not seek anywhere outside of my other senses. I'm thankful for the opportunity of being able to do this. I have been so depressed. I've been angry with God because I loved my job. I understand I had only worked two days a week. However, I was willing to drive an hour every single time to get there and an hour to get home. And I am in belief that I have served so much there. And um, I am thankful to them because I have learned so much from being there. I have really mastered and refined who I am and what I'm doing. Through being there, I am just being challenged by God to instead making the whole world my office. But I'm shy and I'm not sure how to really market what I do. It doesn't feel like it's something that it's marketed either. You feel that God has a plan for you and me to work together and that you're guided by God to give me X amount of money and then I'm going to give you X amount of time. You know? <sighs> and maybe I've already gave it and like now it's time for you to just give back and just say thank you for all that you've done. I don't know. And I'm not expecting a handout. I'm just trying to figure out like what's my place in the world? Where do I go from here? And how do I get the energy to keep going? Because I'm still so heartbroken. Have you ever been so heartbroken? It's like hard to go on. Like literally it's hard to like have the energy to get up and go do things. But like sometimes maybe you have to push yourself. Like maybe I have to push myself to wash dishes or I have to push myself to go for a bike ride. I have to push myself to hang out with some friends because I'm having like a hard time. Like just being and breathing. Like I'm having a hard time thinking or breathing. You know, all that stuff. And um, I feel like this loops in perfect with the video that's coming next. Part of my repentance, a part of me being completely transparent. But I'm also very excited to share with you. Give me a few moments to kind of like heal myself and have my own spiritual practice and to do things that I feel help me and that I enjoy and that I love. Thank you for holding so much space. Thank you for doing your part. Thank you for listening when God tells you to do something. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm sorry for every time I haven't listened. I'm sorry I did not always get the same message that you have gotten. I'm sorry that I am not you sometimes, but I am also, I am sorry I'm not sorry I'm not you. I'm very happy to be me and to have this opportunity to live and breathe as me and to get to know God and to just have this closeness, which what feels like myself as if God is a part of myself. And that the closer I get to know it, that it gets to know me. It's just like some type of really beautiful thing. And I am feeling extremely empathetic and guilty and sad for everyone that doesn't like have that faith and belief. I've been there too, you know, like the complete like you're crazy. <laughs> you know, I've been there. And then, um, but now I'm also that other way, you know, where it's like you're crazy, you don't believe me. Like it's just you feel really heartened and sad. Um, all you can do is do your part and I'm just like again thankful and part of me is afraid that like I'll fall asleep again if That makes sense I'm afraid that I will forget all of this. I'll forget who I am and how far I've come. I'll forget the struggle <laughs> I'm here to walk with you And to work with the Word of God <laughs> <sighs> Which you can say isn't always clear because my own words in my head is talking over it. 
and it's time to make clear with God that it is clear that I hear and that I am following protocol. So let me get out of here. Many blessings to you. Oh, thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you. No words served, no energy served. Enough. Thank you. Shanti, shalom.